Hello and welcome to video two for week one. In the previous video, I reviewed the basic definitions for infinite series, talked about divergence and convergence and partial sums. In this video, I want to do three particular convergence examples to give some more detail and information about what can happen with these partial sums and with this convergence and divergence. I'm going to start with this series. This is an alternating series, a type that we'll talk about a little bit more in a future video. This is 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 and so forth and so on. Uh, I'll put this up here since I've got it for a couple of slides. Let's look at the partial sums. The first partial sum, the first term is just 1. It starts at n equals 0, so negative 1 to the 0 is 1. And then the second partial sum, 1 minus 1 is 0. The third partial sum, we add 1, we get back to 1. Fourth, fourth partial sum, we then subtract 1, get back to 0. In this way, we get a pattern. All the even partial sums are 0 and all the odd partial sums are 1. We use subscripts 2n and 2n plus 1 for evens and odds. If we look at the limit of these partial sums, we've got a partial sums that are just jumping back and forth between 0 and 1. That limit cannot exist. It doesn't approach either 0 or 1, just jumps back all the way between them. The limit doesn't exist. So this particular infinite series does not converge. Alternatively, we could have used the test for divergence. If we look at the limit of the terms, the terms of the series of these negative 1 to the n, these do not approach 0. They oscillate between positive and negative 1. The test for divergence says that the limit of the terms must be 0 for convergence. So since the limit of the terms is not 0, we cannot have convergence. Here's another example. I'll put this one up as well. This is a type of series called a telescoping series, and we'll see that once we get into the partial sums. 1 over n, n plus 1, n equals 1 to infinity. This complicated denominator we can pull apart into simpler pieces using partial fractions, which was a technique we used in Calculus 2 for integrals of rational functions. So this, this step is the partial fraction step. We break 1 over n, n plus 1 apart into two pieces. And then we can look at the partial sums. So if I take this I can just replace it, since it's equal to the term. And then the first term will be n equals 1. So I get 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2. That's here. That's what I get from the first term. The second term is n equals 2. So I get n equals 2, n equals 3. So I have this from the second term. So the second partial sum is the first term plus the second term. But then this is plus 1 half minus 1 half. So that cancels off. So then I had 1 minus the third, and then I add the third term is the third minus the fourth. Again, plus 1 third minus 1 third cancels off. And this is what we mean by a telescoping series. The partial sums, in theory, just keep adding more pieces, but all of it collapses. So each partial sum, in fact, only has two terms, a positive and a negative term. Fourth partial sum, we had 1 minus a quarter, then we add a quarter minus a fifth. The quarters cancel, we get 1 minus a fifth. And in this way, we could prove or intuit a pattern that the nth partial sum is 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. The fourth partial sum is the fifth here, the third partial sum is the fourth here, so this n will have an n plus 1 here. And then we can take the limit of these partial sums, uh, 1 over n plus 1 as n goes to infinity goes to 0, we're dividing by a large number, we get a small number, so in the limit all that's left is 1. And we conclude that this sum, this infinite series, has value 1 because of this telescoping nature of its partial sums. One last example for this. Before I do that, I want to introduce the notion of the factorial. Probably familiar to you, but just in case it is, and I want to make sure that we remind ourselves what a factorial is. So a factorial of a positive whole number is all numbers up to that point multiplied together. So n factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 all the way up to n. As an example, 6 factorial is the product of all the numbers up to 6. And factorials grow very, very quickly. 6 factorial is ready. 720 is a large number. So factorials get very, very large very quickly. Uh, we define factorials for positive whole numbers. We also define factorials for 0. And 0 factorial, by definition, is equal to 1. And there are good reasons for that. Uh, you could think of the fact that 1 is the multiplicative identity. So multiplying nothing together, what you have left with is the thing that doesn't do anything with multiplication, which is the number 1. And then if you were to start any multiplication, multiplying by 1 would work. So with that reminder of a factorial, let's do the factorial example. The 
sum one over n factorial n goes from zero to infinity. And I want to give you these partial sums and sort of show you what's going on with them. This is a little bit less concrete because I'm not going to be able to come up with a pattern for them. But I, I do want to sort of show you the behavior and then give you the result without proof. So I have the factorials in the denominator here. So the first term, the zeroth term, is one over zero factorial, is just one. Uh, one over one factorial is also one. So the first two terms, one plus one is two. Uh, one over two factorial, two factorial is just two. So the second partial sum is one plus one plus a half, which is five halves. Uh, add the next term, one over three factorial is six. Five halves plus a six is 16 over six. Uh, add the next factorial, four factorial is 24. So one over four factorial is there. Uh, I get 61 24 fourths. Five factorial is 120. Uh, adding that to the previous terms gives me 51 over 20. Six factorial is one over seven twenty, and you can see I'm adding pretty small numbers now. I'm already adding things that don't don't grow very quickly. These these are these are shrinking pretty quickly. Uh, I get this, and from this it's hard to come up with a pattern. It's, it's not obvious to us that these fractions uh, have any particular form. But it does seem that they're not growing that quickly. This this number is still less than three. So maybe there's a case to be made that this converges. Maybe it doesn't. The harmonic series diverge pretty slowly. It turns out, and again, I'm going to state this without proof, that this is a convergent series, that these partial sums do, do indeed converge. And it's a lovely statement that they converge exactly to the special number e, the exponential base. You can actually take this as a definition of the exponential base if you wish. The reason for this we'll get into later on in week two we'll have a, a, an indirect proof of this fact but for now it's a nice series to know about nice way to show that we can converge all sorts of strange numbers um, particularly when we can't see a particular nice pattern in the partial sums